Hello, 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 guys. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And we have Flo here, who's running Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So introduce yourself and then we can uh, begin. Hello. Also, the capture seems to be broken. Yeah, it's fixed now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm Flo. I demi actively run Metal Gear Rising. Great game. Big recommendation to ever to play this at least once. You won't regret it. And today I'm running Metal Gear Rising Any Percent on the hard difficulty, which is basically New Game Plus. And if everything goes right, we won't see a lot of bosses for a lot of time. So I guess I can just go right into it. Uh, I closed my notes. Okay, I found them. There they are. <laughs> All right. Uh, timing starts as soon as I hit confirm on the, the level select. But I will just call it out. Uh, let me just make sure I selected the right difficulty, because if I don't select the right difficulty, every single strat isn't working. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm gonna hit confirm on 3, so be ready for that. Okay. 1, 2, 3. Okay, we start immediately with skipping a cutscene, because we, we don't sadly don't watch any cutscenes in the game. Because they are slow, and you can skip 90% of them, so we just do that. Also, the, the good part about New Game Plus is, we are basically always in Ripper mode for every combat encounter. So every fight is super fast. And we have the worst boss of this whole game right at the start, because it's Ray. Ray! is not behaving most of the times, so we just hope he attacks us with an attack we can counter and that he doesn't jump away all the time, which he really doesn't want to do. So that's gonna be fun. He really doesn't want to do anything that he's supposed to do. Hello. Yes, that's exactly what I want to see. You can do that like five more times or two, three more times. And then it's good. Also, a quick part about like the, the blade mode cutting sequences. You can cancel all of them immediately and they will do damage. For like most of the bosses. Oh hey, that's actually a quick ray. But we just need to wait for him to jump away. And then, race should be done. Ray actually behaving for once. That's good, that's what I want to see. Yeah, that was way one already done in like around two minutes. So, bosses are really quick in this game, if they behave. At least, the ones that aren't like on a fixed pattern, or rather, that you can't manipulate in a way that you just always get the same attacks, or always get the same damage out. But yeah, now we have Sundowner running away because he's, he kidnapped some very important person. So we're just following him. Get more tutorials of the game, but we don't need them. We know how to play this game. Do some normal jumps up here because it's faster than using the stairs. And then, oh no, Ray isn't dead. He's back. And. This part should be less annoying than the first part, because he's more prone to just attacking you. We we'll just do a jump attack here, because that's like the only thing you can hit him with.
Mm. Right, we can immediately cancel out of this because it does damage. <laughs> oh, I need to be a bit careful here to not die, so I'm just gonna do that. Give me some healing. Okay. And that should be Ray 2 already. If I do, did everything correctly, he should go immediately into the next phase. Yeah, there he is. And to no one's surprise, he's still not dead. This array is really just a bit different. Okay, yeah, we have this sequence where we run down this tower, which, funny enough, if we do this casually, we can just hug this wall and just hold forward, and you will always get to the end without getting hit. It's really easy. <laughs> And there was a ray too. And a really quick time. Okay, we just skip more cutscenes. And we immediately go into the the train sequence. Where we will find Sam for the first time. And find our friend Sundowner again, who still kidnapped the president or something. <laughs> oh wow. <clears throat> I didn't parry correctly there, so I got stunned when he was supposed to attack me. Uh... And let's see if I can do it correctly here. I wanted to block one attack there, but I didn't get my block out, my parry. So we're just gonna live with this, I guess. And don't worry about it. Just a flash wound. We didn't lose an arm. Yeah, I don't fully understand what causes Sam to attack here. Because for me, he always cancels his own attack before he does a second attack. But that was Sam. And if I remember correctly, we get like new a new arm basically from the doctor, which we will see in a bit, I guess. And we are off to a new mission after I don't know how much time passes for this. It's been a while since I read up on all the lore. But yeah, we can go to like the first real skip of the game, which is polearm jumps. Which are like a real weird mechanic of the game where you can activate ripper mode while doing a jumping polearm attack and you just got more height than you're supposed to be so we can go out of bounds that way so that's fun it makes this game a lot faster when you can go to areas you weren't supposed to be in like here i'm with this is like two or three tries because this one is really hard for me because you can do a polearm jump that is like super specific in height and get out of bounds here. Okay, one more. Ah, I got robbed there. That was so close. I was running on top of the invisible barrier but then fell down the wrong way. So we're just gonna kill this guy and do the backup for that. <laughs> which is do the same thing but outside the building which is like way easier because the wall isn't that high. And then we just run on top of this wall on all of the invisible barriers against this invisible barrier to go even further out of bounds and then swap to a different weapon here because it's faster 
Yeah. Because normally we have like this whole semi stealth section or not, depending how you play the game. Where you have to go all the way around here into this warehouse, where we just run on top of this wall and go into the play wolf fight. And it didn't fall, fall down the, the map, that's also good, because that's a huge time loss. Then we just use our P grenades, activate Ripper mode, and then we just do a normal pincer attack and a charge pincer attack, and that was Blade Wolf. Don't worry, he's fine. No Blade Wolves were hurt in the process of the speedrun. And I did a jump attack because I got too excited there. Yeah, we're just gonna skip this fight because it's not needed. We can just run straight into the cutscene trigger for the, the helicopters. <laughs> Clearly normal chase sequence here. But we can also do a small skip that I will explain in a bit. Because this game is very well programmed. You're playing on controller. You can do a dodge input on mouse and keyboard. Which makes it... So you break out of the, the force cutscene trigger or the force QTE and that makes it so you save time because you can just straight ahead run off the bridge like not only there's like this this QTE you have to do to run on, on top of the bridge again because it got destroyed but we just don't do that in the speed run you can just dodge on keyboard and then just run into the next cutscene basically that isn't even that that old. Like I, I'm still running like an older route of this because it's easier for me. Also, another skip: we can jump in here in with Ripper mode, Blade mode, and then we can just walk past this this combat area. Because as soon as like two guys passes this door, the door closes off, but we can just run past it. But I think that was found like two years ago or something that you can just dodge on keyboard and mouse there. And he's just, and you can just skip the, the QTE there. Hey. Okay. Very stuff. We just jump over these two enemies. They somehow saw me, but that's fine. But we can just hack this wall really slowly. And run past all the enemies. So basically, we make this game a stealth game when you're not supposed to stealth it half the time. Yeah, we have to score this Boris because this is factory, and we just restart from the checkpoint here because it's faster than walking down the area. And well, you have like two ways here, but there's like factory skip, but it barely saves any time for me, and it's like super hard and requires like super specific polearm jumps. So I'm just gonna do the normal way, that is, do the combat encounter, because it's not that much slower. Did I get any? Yes, I get everyone. Okay. Don't say if his team must be in here. So we just run normally through the factory. Ah. Ah. Don't save in Slightly mistimed my run there. <laughs> you don't want to get caught there because it's, it triggers like enemies that you don't want to fight. So we just restart here because it's still faster. Yeah, factory skip is a very hack. Like if you get it first try, it's amazing. It saves so much time. But if you don't, it's not. So we throw an RP grenade here. Because it alerts these enemies, and then we just jump over them and hopefully don't get detected. I think because I sprinted there, the enemies got alerted. Because enemies actually, like, listen to sound in this game. So I'm just gonna throw another grenade here, just in case. Can just get another RP grenade back later. But yeah, we just skip this encounter. Also, I menu wrong there. We want the pincer blades for the next boss fight. Because next up is coming Mistral. Which is like the second or well, first real boss of the game. But we got pincer blades, so the fight is super easy. Because you can just do a normal charge pincer attack and the first phase is done already. 
immediately blade mode cancel here or just blade mode once because we don't need to cut it and we're in the first, second phase already guess what we do the same thing again and that's phase two done <laughs> yeah quick optimization here as soon as you see the checkpoint icon you can just restart because it's it brings you to the third phase. We just slide here, do a charge pincer attack. And if we hit the... Oh, wow. Okay. Got trolled there. I guess we do it like this. The small enemy grabbed me, so I couldn't do the QTE to end the fight. No, that was nearly correct. <laughs> but yeah. And I was basically Mistral already. This is just three attacks and the fight is done. The boss fight in this game in the speedrun of this game are like so fun if if you get it correctly. Because you can win all of them in like three attacks or four attacks maybe. It's like super It's so much fun to do if it works out. Skip, just skip this menu, because we are going to... Oh, where do we go again? Is it Mexico? I don't remember. The cutscene for this next is like... Really good. Like, big recommendation if you play this game, watch the cutscenes. You won't be disappointed. It's right. I'm in the but yeah, now we are in the sewers. Right. <laughs> to us, Sundowner... Like went to this place because they are doing experiments on, on brains here from kids because they basically want them to or to make them born killers basically Yeah, sadly, that's the the case with the speedrun you skip like you kill the bosses so fast that you don't get a good music so Let me just rip them out here already so I don't need to do it in the fight to save my hands Oh no. Enemies, who could have guessed? They're just hanging from the ceiling. But we can just do a play a attack with the Mundoon weapon, the, the size, and this encounter's done. Also, when you see the score screens popping up, I'm actually like skipping out of them. Oh. Because. If you press like X and circle, I don't know what the Xbox buttons are right now, you can skip score, score, score screens. Because as soon as they show up, you can press these two buttons and they are gone. And that's like faster more, for like every score screen except one. Also, I got grabbed there, that's bad. I also somehow press play on the Seamount on Twitch channel again with my controller and I still don't know what triggers that. Good that I muted that. Okay. Anyways, enjoy this extra cutscene for a bit because I had to fix that. <laughs> and we just fight three of these enemies. Hopefully I got all of them because there's an enemy inside as well and that is this quick combat sequence. Which brings us to another cutscene we sadly skip immediately. And we basically find a kid here that got attacked or escaped the the, the science center that is down here. Yeah, it's basically the Kawabanga skit. The kid is a really good character in this game. And they basically want you to either stealth here or kill all the enemies. You can normally just jump past this one. But I'm bad at it, and because I got stuck on the enemy corpse, I got detected anyway, so we try again. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna kill the first enemy, because that's the one that always detects me. And then you just jump past this enemy, and the one on, on top won't see you, because he's just gonna jump over it, and then we just run to the door. <coughs> So you skip another combat encounter, basically. Just kill this enemy. And then we find a fake wall. Oh no. 
Pretty well hidden, I gotta say. I think this is probably the the speedrun is probably the most stealth I am playing this game like ever. Because we skip stealth and many quotation marks because we skip a lot of the combat encounters. Also, I'm gonna open that chest over there. Normally, it's not needed, but I got an AP grenade in it if I remember right, and I might I want one extra in case I. I miss stuff later in the game and I do, I'm not comfortable with just one grenade. We just throw a grenade there because it alerts the enemies downstairs. Which makes us be able to just hit this button that like skips the encounter or skips to the next part of the level. So... I mean, there are like five enemies here we need to kill. Oh, oh this one died. Don't know how he died, but that's the next combat encounter. Combat encounters are so fast in this game because you can just cut them twice with Ripper mode, and they should all they should be basically dead all the time. If you don't cut them correctly, they are crawling on the ground, which is pretty bad because they somehow are able to parry your attacks. So. Optimally, you don't want that to happen, because if it happens, you need to use either a different weapon or do a slide attack into her, or into them. But yeah. This is sadly unskippable, but we get a funny USB joke. Yeah, exactly, this armed grounded enemies just parry everything. It's It doesn't make any sense in my opinion. But it, it just be like that. Here we get another cutscene that basically shows Sundowner and the Senator. Who we will definitely not encounter in the later parts of the game. Oh, this enemy survived. And they are doing stuff together. So, oh no, the Senator is evil. How could that happen? So I need to equip the, the pincer blades in here because we fight a mini boss basically. Because how this game works is mini bosses get added as normal enemies later. So we're gonna fight Grad here. And hopefully Grad is cooperating and not trolling me. Because Grad can shoot rockets that auto aim onto you and well they basically always hit you. If you don't block them. We just jump around these walls. Yeah, there are the rockets already. We just do a pincer attack, a jump pincer attack here, because that immediately brings him to this phase. And then you just do a charge pincer, but I'm just gonna restart here, because Grad always shoots rockets at the start for me. And he's always hitting me with them, so... Yeah, he didn't do that, so we just wait this one out. Do another pincer attack. And we just do two normal pincer attacks here. Okay, stray, because I did something different. Okay, maybe another one. Okay. That wasn't correctly, but it worked out. We didn't get a hit, that's the important part. But yeah, Grad took so many hits, and in the next level you will just see Grad dying in like one hit. Oh, that was the wrong weapon. We want to make sure we equip the pole arm before this next level starts, because we need it right at the start of the level. For some more pole arm jumps out of bounds shenanigans. <laughs> and yeah, we basically found a lab where they keep all the children that they kidnap, basically. And our friend, the, the kid we rescued earlier, is also here, but we won't see that cutscene. But yeah, that was chapter 2 already. It was chapter 2? Not sure. I might have named my splits wrong. Yeah, it was chapter 2. Okay, we want to make sure after the second level that we don't hit customize Ra Raiden's body because it's a time loss. And we skip into the cut, just skip the opening cutscene and immediately go into a combat sequence because 
We are not in the company of Boris anymore. We basically resigned so we can we don't trouble them and their company. And we immediately go out of bounds at the start here. We basically jump over the the combat barrier and skip the encounter there. Because normally there's enemies spawning here. But because we are still in that combat area, they don't spawn. And we just run to the next area. But technically we are still in an encounter. Like if this window would like if the, the shutters wouldn't be closed, you could probably still see the enemies trying to attack us with grenades. But we can't progress the game further, so we need to restart once here. So that we can just continue with the level like normally. Which brings us to more enemy spawning here. Hm. And we just do this brave blade attack because it spawns enemies and we kill all of them immediately when they spawn. We want to stick to the left there because otherwise we are getting hit by rocket launchers and we don't want to get hit by rocket launchers. And then we can hit the elevator button before the combat is even over. So we trigger the elevator before it's even done, basically. And you might have seen that I unequipped the pole arm there. Oh, I pressed like the weapon menu. That's because we can do a small skip here with like the elevator. Like if you look at the map on the top right, there's like an enemy spawning in a bit. And as soon as he passes like that the white line on the map, you can do uh, not this attack. This attack, which increases our height, and that makes it so the elevator door opens faster. So we are getting slightly faster out of the elevator than we are supposed to. It's only small time save, but it works out. And I take all, all the time save I can get, or all the not combat encounters I can do. And then we immediately go out of bounds here. There's like two way. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was. I didn't. I, I saw it. I was like on the wall, but I was in air already. So I did my attack that I normally don't do. Like normally you can just jump from the ground or to the right onto this area here. But I'm super bad at it. So I'm just doing the backup for it. Okay. Oh, I didn't equip the weapon. That's, that's why it doesn't work. Also, we want to make sure to not run too far into this area because it spawns a combat encounter. And we just jump over here. So. And we do another polar because normally we need to wait for an elevator down here. Or we can just be on top of this area and jump down here. Also, flashing images. Sorry for that. Can't deny that, sadly. And we just jump on top of the elevator or area where we are supposed to land on. And we just jump on top of the, the trigger for the next area. Uh, camera, please. Where am I? Oh god, that was super scary. I know what the camera did there, but it wasn't what I wanted it to do. Because you can, like, if you w run too far to the right here, you fall into the map again. If you run too far to the left, you are falling off the map out of bounds. So we want to be, like, on top of this wall, basically. Also more flashing images, sorry. But yeah, we are basically skipping this whole like tunnel area with they, where they want you to either stealth or fight your way through it by just running on top of it. But it's basically walled off here, so we can't get out of this area. So we need to go into this Blade Wolf encounter, get a checkpoint and restart here. And now we basically are inbounds again and can do, can do stuff like we want to. Which immediately puts us into another combat encounter because, well, we basically have all of Denver behind us right now, or hunting us. And hey, it's Grad, but this time he just dies in one hit because he's not a boss. Now we can just hack this wall. I'm just gonna walk slowly here. You can probably jump up the way because it just skips another combat encounter. I'm probably getting hit by a rocket here. Okay, I got lucky. Yeah. 
Not optimal, but it works out. We killed all the enemies before they got to me. Ah, yeah, that, that's true. We play with the fox blade because it ignores armor, basically. We do another pole arm jump here so we can get on the... Like, normally, this triggers a cutscene over there. But we just pole arm jump here and we do a dive kick over the trigger for it. So we skip it, basically. Uh, I mismenued here. We want EM grenades and we want pizza blades for the upcoming boss fight. <clears throat> and because we skipped the trigger, uh, we're talking to nothing. Because normally Sam is there as a hologram talking to us, basically reminding us of who we are because Raiden only uses his weapon as a tool when he's Jack the Ripper. And Raiden doesn't like that. He's getting a, a huge headache for that. But we won't see that. And then we go into another combat encounter here. He survived. That's not what's supposed to happen. Okay. Why are you alive? I hit you twice. Mm -hmm. And our headache gets worse. So we are now limping to the next boss area. Yes, basically. He's done with like Sam's speeches and the next character that will appear soon. Which has my favorite soundtrack of the game, but uh, sadly we won't hear a lot of it if I do stuff correctly. Which I hope will happen, because if that works out, we are not losing 4 minutes of time. <clears throat> yeah, we're basically just walking past all these enemies. Also, I'm just gonna pick up this healing item when it doesn't matter because I have full healing items and full life, basically. Okay, let's see if I can get like a small optimization here for getting into the arena. Because I think we can walk a bit further to the left here to alert the enemies quicker. Hello, can you see me? Yeah, we alerted them. And there's one guy with a rocket launcher like behind us. And what we want is that he shoots us in the back with the rocket, which hopefully happens here. Yeah, there it is. And we, he just launches us into the boss arena. So those, this whole cutscene starts like faster. But we, we basically can't do any. No matter how, mu how many enemies we kill in here, they just respawn. Because there's yet another speech coming up. So I don't know what it is, but since I'm running this game again, these enemies are super aggressive. Also Sam popping in, he was behind the pillar all along. I don't know why these are so aggressive. Like, when I ran this game, like, a bit more active two years ago, I was basically just able to, like, look up in this area and they never attacked me. But now they just go ham all the time. Also, I got informed that, like, a bunch of Metal Gear emotes got added by the Simaton crew. So, one of them already got posted there, which is very important for the next boss fight coming up. Because Monsoon shows up, and then we got this unskippable cutscene, but only on PC, hello. It's the character that loves memes. And Sam, who's mildly uninterested about all of this. And the most important character over there. But well, we'll see that in a bit. The DNA of the soul. Well, what are the other characters doing? He's doing nothing. Sam is bored. Monsoon is going on about memes. Ah, there, the impo most important character enters the, the cutscene. I'm not talking about the guy, I'm talking about the cat best character in this game. You can't fight nature, it's this one and uh, a gate guard in like the last level of the game, but sadly we won't see him. Always pet your cat if you have one. If it's fine with getting pet. And Monsoon scared the cat, I guess, because he's done with this cutscene already. Bye, cat.
And Demon Zoom cutscene. Okay, so oh, what a, you can skip this cutscene on the Xbox One version, but not on PC. We immediately get shown into the Monsoon fight, which is past if I can get it right. Just do this pincer attack and dodge into him, and not another pincer attack, a jump pincer attack, and face one of star. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get the second phase, because that's the one I have the most problems with. Because I do like small mistakes, because how the quick kills in this game work is we want to get uh, the HP of bosses at certain values, because if they go below that value, they get damage reduction, which makes us do less damage. And if we have like more health, or if the boss has more health than the damage reduction, we can just do enough damage that we get into the next phase, basically. Okay, we want to do one slide attack here, do a normal pincer attack, another one, and a third one, and jump, so we can immediately slide into him. Now he has 39.7%. Normally he goes into the next phase. But because he's at that percentage, we can just EM grenade him again and do two attacks here. Do a dodge attack to cancel out and do another pincer attack and it's done. That's the monsoon quick hit. Because normally you only see the, you see this multiple times. But because he's at 10%, he's basically at the last phase already. We would just want to block this twice. Well, eight mode this thing because if we don't, we get hit. And now he's immediately going into his last phase, where he's throwing this giant pillar at us. And we also get a checkpoint here because if he, yeah, like you blade run up this thing and then he throws a tank at you or something. He throws a car at you, and if you don't cut that car, you immediately game over. So you don't want to cancel out of this thing when you want to, like, attack at once. And you get a QTE there that you can hit before he even, like, shows the QTE. And that's Monsoon done already. Really happy I got that, because in my practice runs, I failed that so many times. And we're off to hour four, which is basically we are looking for sundowner now. That was a really quick monsoon. Right, we just skip the screen again. Don't customize Raiden's body, very important. I think also my 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 mouse is getting captured on screen stream as well. So every time like the score screen happens, my mouse is just shown on it. Yeah, we want to swap to polearms here because it's attacking faster, or at least I always do it like this. We get another speech from Sundowner that brains are in the server room. And we also unlock, like this is the point in the game where you unlock Ripper mode again, or basically the monsoon fight is, because you're always in Ripper mode there. Also this is what I meant with uh, ground dismember dudes always blocking you, because this guy just dodged everything, but he is also alive apparently, that's not good. And of course he despawns as soon, as soon as I go back to kill him, how nice of him. Low fi but I take it. Yeah, Doctor is with us here, because he has a very important job. Oh, there is a pillar there. I went too far to the right. The appear to be disabled, which we because Doctor is just having the most important task here to hack the elevators. Or rather, Blade Wolf will do it and Doctor is just moral support, I guess. And this is basically a good breakpoint for your hands for a bit. Because you can just hack this wall, because there's only two enemies that are coming your way. And you just can kill them with like a pincer attack. Because there's like two flying enemies there, but because you're behind the wall, they can't attack you. And there's two more flying enemies. What I like to do is just do some normal pole arm jumps here without the cancel. Yeah, and then I just Beyblade this wall basically. Because there's only two guys coming here and I need to wait for like one and a half minutes or something. I don't remember the... 
the specific amount of time, but we are just waiting for the doors to open for the elevators. I think the other guy got stuck because he's not coming my way. I think he's stuck on the stairs. Oh, never mind, there he is. And as soon as that second guy is here, the, the door should open after that. Wait, okay. I think he actually got stuck. Don't think I have ever had it that the second guy reached me before the ele elevator door opened. That's interesting. Yeah. We just use the elevator normally. Cuts this door, walk to the right, because that's apparently where the door is open already. Because we need to cut some panels in the wall here. And we just cut this enemy down. Hopefully don't get hit by rocket launcher. This guy is not cooperating. Got this panel in the wall. And there's another rocket launcher guy coming. Got the third panel in the wall. How many EM grenades do I have? Uh, RP grenades. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this time that he doesn't spawn an enemy because that was a problem in my practice runs. Okay, let's see if I can get this. You can throw an RP grenade, like... Somewhere around here, which alerts the enemy. And then we can. Okay, he saw me. Because if you. If he doesn't see, you can just hit the button, not triggering the combat encounter. Like, you just don't get this combat, and you can just open the door. Like, with him still being there, and just run past him. But it's fine like that, it's still not a lot of time lost. If it works out, you get a free area, basically. If it does work out, you have to do one attack at him. <clears throat> oh no, they found us. Okay, hopefully I don't get attacked a lot of times here, because in my few practice runs I did, the enemy somehow hit me a lot of times here, so I actually lost my healing items, or some of them at least. It's super weird, and don't think I've ever had that, like, when I was actively running the game a while ago. But yeah, we basically sprint, jump, and like all the way up. Like basically, oh, I didn't mention that. Jumping in this game with Ninja Run is faster than just running. So, if you're wondering why I'm jumping all the time, it's faster. And we just follow this wall. Basically to the end. For another grad that is here, who could have guessed? We just do this. All these sliders in the area. Perhaps they could be put to use. Yeah, another small sequence here where we need to blade mode. But we can just cancel it immediately. So Ryan immediately jumps to the next area where we run up a, a skyscraper. And fun thing here, if you run in the middle, like a normal run, and jump all the time, the rockets are less likely to spawn in your way. Because if you get hit by a rocket, it's game over. But you, if you just do that, you will always just get past it. But I did this part already, I guess. Oh, I jumped there. <laughs> Another phone call here. And we just run to the next door. Yeah, there's like way more projectiles coming your way. But if you do that, there's like barely any. Why are you not running my way? That's weird. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this guy first for once. Yeah, that's that's what I expected to happen there. Rocket launcher guys are a pain in this game. Yeah, and then we only have this one guy there. Where we do a slide attack, blade mode, cut him once. And because we're still in the combat encounter, we can just blade mode or pole arm jump up here and run past the wall here. Because as long as you don't have the score screen, or the score screen isn't done, these enemies don't spawn. So we'll just run past all the enemies in this area. Like if you are super fast, you don't even need to go my way. You can just run from this wall over here straight up here. Like you can do a small polearm jump to get up here. 
Hmm. Oh yeah, next up is the elevator sequence. After that, I think one or two more phone calls. I think there's another one coming up. Not so sure anymore. Okay, never mind. That was the one that is coming up. Which is like another small stealth part. And we just cut them for twice, and this guy cut twice, and this guy cut twice. And activate the elevator. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is correct. Uh, basically, another small combat encounter. You just cut them twice, like every enemy in this game. I forgot how these enemies are called, but they're basically cows. I forgot their specific term, term how they are called. been way too long since I actually remember like what the normal enemies are called but they all have names but that's also like they can block me but only sometimes ah the gecko yeah and the dwarf geckos were the small three arm enemies right I think it was, it was like that also, they destroyed our elevator. This is all safe to do, I guess. Just cut these two guys, and then there should be two more guys spawning in. They do it. Why did they do a jump attack there? I thought that was scary, because for some reason the elevator went up again when there was no dwarf gecko on there. Yeah. Clearly combat is done. There you see no enemies here. Oh no, more enemies. Okay, we are waiting for two flying guys spawning in. Let me just do this attack, because it should kill a few of them. Where's the third one? Also, why is someone calling me now? Why are you calling at 2 p.m.? I don't have time. Amazing. What is that enemy doing here? Okay. Normally this guy should have been dead already, but... He trolled me by running out of my way. Yeah, basically elevator sequence are done, and we'll meet some old friends here. What should I if they're quite civil but no yeah. indeed and I even so the if you well if I whatever yeah, we just hit like a very important door we need to press this button on the door to get another button on the door yeah uh I want pincer blades here okay what do we want to do here I you see I have still a pay grenades equipped because we have refights from Mistral here and we just RP grenade here so she doesn't see us immediately. And then we just do two attacks here. And she's dead. Or she should be dead. Okay. This is not working as, as it should be. Yeah, this is not how you do the quick hit for this. Okay, I'm also getting massively trolled here. Is enough? Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, we want to menu here because we need EM grenades because guess what? Monsoon is back. And we charge our pincer 2 here and wait for him to spawn. Let him hit us two times and then we just hit the wall. Throw an EM grenade here. Then we blade mode him and just run into the middle of the arena. Because we wait for him to show up and just crash into him basically and block all his attacks. Yeah, then we just block his stuff here. Because we we are basically we need to wait till he's like attackable again. 
I'm not sure if you can just EM grenade them again, but I'm not gonna do it because every time I try that, it goes horribly wrong. This is also not perfect parries, but that's fine. Where did he go? There's his head. Is that his head? Yes. And that should be the fight. Oh yeah, that was the AI refights. Which brings us to another monologue speech from Sundowner that we can't skip. So we just have to wait for him to be done. So another point to take a small break for your hands. <clears throat> oh yeah, there he is already. Yeah. Bus, no bus. Straight to the brain. It's like a dream. Well, maybe dream is the wrong word. They can kill some POWs, some civilians. Yeah, basically nothing to do here. You just have to wait for him to continue his or to finish his monologue. You can't attack. You can only slowly walk and spin in circles, so. When he's done yapping, we can finally get a cutscene that we can immediately skip. So, so next up is Sundowner, where it requires me to scroll down my notes in a bit. But I can do that in a bit. Yeah, epic fight on top of the skyscraper at the heliport. Let me scroll down my notes for a bit. That's not my notes. There. I normally just skip the cuts in here and I will just do that. Okay, fight begins with you dodging on the keyboard because you want to be further back in the arena. And then we will just wait for him to charge you. Do a Norton Pinsar 2. Immediately cancel it. Wait for him to pull up his shield again. Do the same thing again. And do another charge Pinsar 2. And I got trolled by the helicopter. Okay, that's not the full quick kill. Okay, something went horribly wrong here. Let me let me retry that. I think I was too slow on the pincer attacks. Because the helicopter like trolled me and did his attacks. Yeah, that's what he did. I, I cancelled it too slow. Oh, he's doing it again. Why? Well, that hasn't gone wrong in a while, but whatever. Still pretty fast. Okay, well, clearly he's dead, right? He didn't just get catched by a helicopter somehow. I don't know how you manage to, like, grab a helicopter from below when you're falling down a building. But Sundowner just did it, so... Yeah, we get a lot of small sequence where we control one of these things by putting a sword through it. Which we promptly ignore by just hugging this bottom right corner of the wall and spamming the shoot button for the thing. Because basically nothing will spawn in front of like there will be spawning stuff in front of us, but it's getting immediately destroyed by the projectiles we are firing. Hmm. Oh, wow. How did I get hit there? That That's weird. Okay. I mean, at the end, we just cut open this wall. And then we are back on the skyscraper top. Where we are getting attacked by helicopter. But we just throw the thing at it. And Sundowner's protecting his eyes. When that will do nothing when the helicopter explodes behind him. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the Sundowner fight. <clears throat> Which brings us to the escape sequence in a bit. What 
Also Sundowner's corpse being there, and what I like to do is slide attack into him. Oh wow! Okay, normally he get his ragdoll just goes off the building, but he just got stuck there. And you can just pick him off this building like a football. But it didn't work, so we're just awkwardly standing here, doing our phone calls. Okay. Hour five. Basically, we get a cutscene on a bit where our helicopter gets shot. But we are riding, so we just survived that without problems. That was quite the fall, Raiden. And some Let's some goons find on. us. They just spawn in there, like you saw. Just plops into existence. Uh, where are you? Hello, Raiden. Can you attack? Where did that one dude survive again? Okay. We get another phone call from Doctor. And we're hugging this wall because there's more enemies spawning here, but we can just jump right past them. Which brings us to another forced combat encounter. Which hopefully works this time because I had like some some weird issues yesterday, but yeah, it worked. Yesterday in my practice, this dude just didn't want to get off his like wall up there, so I couldn't attack him. So he was just standing up on top of that, just shooting me all the time. It was super weird. Okay. You just wait, he, that's the only score screen we wait on skipping because if the numbers aren't readable, no. Got found out here. Okay, who else got found me? This is someone else, you. But you normally want just want to stay here and then you can jump past this. Someone. Okay. You can just basically skip all of this without ever getting detected. Okay, I have the trusty cardboard box equipped. The most important part of the run. We just wait till these two flying guys are passed, and you just jump two times, and then you just box. You just walk to this area, and then you can just remove the cardboard box, and you skipped all this area. I have located a route with relatively light security. I will and you just run past this guy. Cut open this wall. And the level is basically done. There's only one more enemy. That you can immediately cut down because of Ripper mode, and then you just ignore this car coming in and run straight into the exit trigger. And that was our five. So next up, we have Sam. And there should be a few Sam related emotes in the, the emote list. There's at least one that I saw. The box is OP. It's also the, probably the only use of the box in this run, for the speedrun. Okay, let's see what Sam is doing. Of course he's doing the short taunt, but that should be fine. Because there's like two different starts of this fight, depending if he does a short taunt or a long taunt. He did the short one, so I had to do something different. And he... Hey, can I like... Okay. That should be enough, I think. Okay. Slow fi, but it's it's fine. And you see he got his damage reduction there, so this will take a bit longer. If I do it correctly, he will just be at 10% after this. So that's fine. Hello. Still good enough. Oh yeah, that's Sam Fedori. Not optimal, but still pretty quick. You just cut his arm if I can hit it. And goodbye Sam. He spilled all his tomato ketchup. He's fine. Don't worry about it. He was uh, a life lesson with it as, as well. So. And with that we're already on like the last two levels of the, of the game. There's only hour seven left and then two bosses.
And sadly, we miss like the most important cutscene of the game. Yeah, we skip all these cutscenes that are happening. Basically, we take a giant plane that fly flies at like the speed of sound or something. It's super fast to get to this area. We equip the pole arm again because guess what? We are not going to regular ways through this gate. We are running normally to this wall, doing everything, and we just pole arm jump up here. Oh, I'm gonna do it again. A sprint jump there. Because if you sprint jump, you're, you don't get enough height or you, your height is less. And we first try out of bounce this. That's very good. So I can just equip the pincer blades again because we're basically set up for the end of the game now. <clears throat> just run past all this area, which technically hasn't loaded in yet because we skipped like two combat encounters. Or three even. And we immediately run into the trigger for Excelsus. Basically, Armstrong showing up in his giant mech, doing things. And we just attack the lag, because what else would we do? Okay, not enough damage, but should be fine. Yeah, I guess we could do this like first. We just cut it there without actually cutting it. Because the goal of this fight is just destroy both legs and then it will basically crash. Do the same thing here by not cutting it at all, but we are gonna cut it anyways. And now he should fall down here in the middle. Uh, don't think this is actually needed, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And we just run into this corner a bit. Do a bit more damage that we don't really need. Because he's gonna he's getting damage reduction there basically. Okay, what I want to do is get hit by the plasma cannon. Like one more time, I say. <laughs> yeah, 14% HP. Basically we want that till the end of the game now. And the reason we want that HP is because in the next fight before Armstrong, we basically Armstrong is scripted in a way that he doesn't process till he picked our head in, basically. Tell us about a good feature that he has, that also is an emote in the chat. That one exactly. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we don't get that. I got sadly got hit there. Because I failed my dodge. Okay, that... That went wrong a lot. Okay. Hello. Can we... Get to destroy leg cutscene? Apparently not. Okay, now we get it. Got hit too many times there, so we won't see the immediately phase transition, but it's fine. Do the same thing here, and basically we are done with successors fighting. Because everything now is just good QTEs. Well, we trade our sword for an even bigger sword. Completely normal behavior here. Also, Armstrong is piloting this thing and he's not getting a scratch from this. Hmm. Normal Saturday for Raiden. Just carrying around a comically large sword. Okay, two more QTEs. And then one more blade mode card, and then we are off to the final fight of the game. That's clearly how I cut him, by the way. Alright, time for Armstrong. I'm just gonna call this the first phase because 
technically already the Armstrong fight. Skip this cutscene. We cancel our first blade mode attack to get the charge pincer too. Then we dodge past him and hit him once. Done. We get another cutscene for him. And this is where I would have liked to have less HP because he just hits you once and immediately triggers the cutscene. But this works as well, it's just two hits. And we are getting standing here. Feel free to spam that. Which, funny enough, is scripted so you can't lose, but if you don't spam the button, it just slows down to comically slow levels. Okay, if I just would slow down here, you would slow down immediately to like no speed at all. But that's slow. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do this. And do some good mashing of the X and Y button. Time for the last Armstrong phase, or the, the real Armstrong fight, I guess. Because Sam got a final message for us, but we sadly won't see it. And the good music is starting. And I got hit immediately. Immediately twice. Eh, eh, that's bad. Okay, I dodged it. Oh, nice, we got it. If you jump attack into him, he we interrupt his, his jump, basically. Yeah. Well, like, the Optimus thing is we do enough damage and interrupt all his jumps up there because he's just gonna throw some rocks at us. Okay, I missed it. Well, whatever. These are fine if we can skip the last one. That would be nice, because that's the longest one. Okay. Just... Relate more than here, because it's... Okay, nice. Also, we are just doing Sky Highs, which could be way faster if you... are good at the game, because you can cancel these Sky Highs. Uh, okay. Apparently I missed. That hasn't happened in a while either. How did I miss the spot? Okay, that should be enough. Uh, Armstrong, can you do your thing? Okay, I mispositioned myself there. But that's fine as well. Sadly, we get this immediately slow, bigger rock that he's- oh, never mind, he's throwing Excelsior's parts, that's what happens. Okay. Hello, Armstrong. Punch me in the face, please. This is scripted, we need to get hit here. And we need to wiggle free of the grab. And conveniently, our sword is right next to us. Yeah, maybe I let go too soon. That that might be an option. And we just cut both his arms here. And we get another QT. Also, time is coming up soon. Like, very soon. It's, I don't know, a minute or something. Maybe 30 seconds. Forgot to mention that. The end of time is basically when we hit B for the last time. There's like another spam X QT here. And then we cut his chest a few more times. And then we hit B. That's very soon. Like, it's right after this one, I see. Okay, we do this. Now we cut his chest a few more times. Also, never let go of, of blade mode there. And time. <clears throat> that was close. If I wouldn't have, like, gotten all the throwing faces, that could have been a PB. But that's fine as well. Your dream dies with you. 
Also, we get this amazing cutscene of Armstrong giving us a hug, basically. You've guaranteed the status quo will go on for a while longer, at least. Hello, why can I not tap out of this thing? Continue as an institution, as an industry. Just a friendly hug. Fight for reasons they don't understand, causes they don't believe in. Oh, that timing was pretty good because it's like only one second behind my auto splitter. Professional splitter. Exactly. Successor. Well, yeah, that's Metal Gear Rising in slightly under 1 hour 10. And this is on an old route, that's what I forgot to mention. Like, they, uh, this is basically the beginner route. Which has like the, the basic information of polearm jumps, a few skips you can do here and there. But you can basically be like 20 minutes faster than me. But that is like super optimized, basically getting every quick kill. And like do all like the small skips on M getting called again, why? I don't have time, I will call back. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm basically done with Metal Gear Rising. I have a few shoutouts to give. First time, thanks Simon for having me. Thanks for being good friends as well. For letting me once again run this game and destroy my wrist in the process. Uh, shoutouts to Nero, he also runs this game like every now and then for, for memes. With very meme -y categories and basically showing off like all the fun stuff he had in his time of- Now I'm getting caught on my phone as well, what is this? Give me like five minutes. Uh, yeah, shout out to my friend Mary, who was the world record holder of this game like ages ago, and basically got me into this game like at the start, uh, helping me with like strats and stuff. But yeah, that's everything I have. All right. So enjoy Simathon. I think what is the next? I forgot. Uh, next up is Hard Corpse Uprising. Ah, well, go enjoy that.